Welcome back to Noir Alley. I'm your host, Eddie Muller. Film noir is all about treachery, deceit, and paranoia. You're never quite sure what's going on, who you can trust, and what dreadful pitfall waits just around the corner. Sort of like me recording this introduction before Election Day and knowing it will air the weekend after. Let's hope we're all still here and the country's hanging in there. Today's movie, Nightfall, is from Columbia Pictures in 1957, made near the end of the original film noir movement. You're going to notice that it doesn't have the look and feel of noir films from 10 years earlier, even though it shares many similarities in terms of plot, themes, and story structure. The novel on which it's based was written by David Goodis in 1946 as a follow-up to his popular Dark Passage, made into a classic crime yarn by Warner Brothers, the third teaming of Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall. Good has seemed poised for fantastic Hollywood success, but for some reason, Nightfall drew a pass from every studio in town. Surprising, especially as it seemed like a natural fit for a studio like RKO. The story revolves around a hard luck loner running from a dreadful event in his past, He's shadowed relentlessly by an insurance investigator and a pair of vicious gangsters. The only person he can trust, maybe, is a dame he meets one night in a bar. Sounds tailor-made for Robert Mitchum and Jane Greer. But then, in 1947, RKO already had something very similar in release, out of the past. Arguably the definitive film noir, brilliantly directed by Jacques Tenour, who ten years later would direct this film with Aldo Ray and Anne Bancroft, neither of whom had made a film until the 1950s. Much had changed in those 10 years, in the national psyche, the culture's style, and in the movie business. Television was a factor in all three, but for our purposes, its biggest impact was on noir. By the late 50s, studios were routinely selling prints of their films to TV affiliates around the country, and it quickly became clear, should I say unclear, that films shot in the noir style did not translate to the small screen. Early TV sets couldn't handle the high contrast cinematography. Black areas would bleed together, white areas would burn out. As a result, studios started telling directors and cameramen making pictures in black and white to lighten things up, resulting in a flatter, low contrast look that became known as TV lighting. This is not to say that Burnett Guffey, the director of photography on Nightfall, doesn't do a great job with this picture. There are many visually striking set pieces. It's just that the lustrous chiaroscuro of a film like Out of the Past was no longer economically feasible, given that sales to TV were a significant consideration for studios. The screenplay by Sterling Siliphant was only the third in his long and prolific career. He'd been a publicist for Walt Disney in the late 40s, but started writing features in 1955 with Five Against the House, a caper film that he also co-produced. He does a terrific job here dealing with David Goodis's unique stream-of-consciousness style, and he added some flourishes that improve upon the book. Foremost among these flourishes are the crooks chasing our hero, who are far more memorable on screen than the bad guys in Goodis's novel. Brian Keith, who'd become a nice guy on TV shows like Family Affair, was at risk of being typecast as a laconic but scary heavy, a character he played to great effect in Five Against the House, Tight Spot, and this film. Anyway, you cost us a lot of money trying to find you. And it ain't deductible either. You shut up. <laughs> His partner, Rudy Bond, was a compatriot of Ilya Kazan, having appeared in A Streetcar Named Desire and On the Waterfront. His character here, named simply Red, is one of the more obnoxious sociopaths in noir. Siliphant also switched the story's main action from the East Coast to Hollywood. And those of you who have been to the TCM Classic Film Festival will recognize several locations around Hollywood Boulevard, including Michelli's Restaurant on Los Palmas, which we'll see in the first scene. The interior is not Michelli's, of course. The actual restaurant is too dark for a film released in 1957. Aldo Ray and Anne Bancroft meet noir in a studio recreation of a place where I've had more ravioli and Chianti than is probably healthy. Also featuring James Gregory and Marlon's sister, Jocelyn Brando, 
Here is Nightfall.